Hi, everyone, and welcome to the industry news update from Marantis. Every week, we break down what's new in the cloud native technology landscape. I'm Eric Gregory. My co host, Nick Chase, is out today, but we'll be back next week for our usual back and forth. We'll keep the wackadoodle news corner warm for him. This week, I'll be talking about some big cloud native application milestones, a new report on container security, and this week's developments in the blockchain arena. But first, we have a Marantis release to discuss. This week, we released Marantis Container Cloud 2.15, in addition to a new and upgraded product tour to ease onboarding for new and existing users. This new version boasts several important features, including expanded configuration options for upgrade and maintenance scheduling, and an API for putting machines into maintenance mode. The maintenance upgrades in particular really come together to give users more control over maintenance processes so they can tailor scheduling to their specific needs in a fine-tuned granular way. Out in the wider cloud native world, the big news this week was forecast almost six months ago as the grace period for free institutional use of Docker Desktop came to an end. This comes after Docker Inc.'s announcement last August that they were updating their subscription tiers so that Docker Desktop would be free only for personal or educational use, non-commercial open source projects, or small businesses, which they define as less than 250 employees and less than $10 million in revenue. While last summer's announcement caused a great deal of furor online, the primary impact here is for large businesses, some of which were using Docker Desktop for some ill-advisedly critical production purposes. Now large companies need to make a final decision on whether to purchase organizational subscriptions or not. And SUSE hopes to complicate that decision with its 1.0 general availability release for Rancher Desktop this week. Like Docker Desktop, Rancher Desktop is a container management platform operated through a graphical user interface, but Rancher Desktop places an emphasis on the management of Kubernetes environments for local development and testing, making it more analogous in some ways to something like Minikube, though of course using Rancher's K3's distribution by default. In other release news, monitoring tool Prometheus hit 2.33. Headline features are mostly promotions of existing features, including the remote write receiver being promoted to stable, and the PromQL query language now being able to use absolute timestamps for selections. Both very useful features to have a little more reliably in hand. And speaking of databases, the open source relational database MariaDB saw a different sort of release this week as the MariaDB Corporation announced an IPO through a SPAC. As MariaDB is a fork of MySQL, this will mark the second time developer Michael Wydenius' core technology has gone public. Quite an impressive feat. Moving over to the blockchain arena, over the past few weeks, we've discussed a number of stories dealing with one, blockchain, or two, tech regulation. And India is helping us to bring those threads together this week with an announcement from Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman that the country proposes to tax income from cryptocurrency, NFTs, and other virtual assets at 30%. According to Sitharaman, the magnitude and frequency of cryptocurrency transactions have made it imperative to provide for a specific tax regime. For some international context, the US taxes cryptocurrency as property, like assets such as stock, or gold, and the tax rate on capital gains in the US varies depending on factors like household composition, income bracket, and how long you've held the cryptocurrency, maxing out at a rate of 20%. Policies differ across the EU at present, and China, by contrast, has banned all private cryptocurrency transactions, instead adopting a central bank digital currency, which it says has been used in over 3 million transactions. India likewise aims to launch a central bank digital currency, also known as a CBDC, after experimenting with it in limited trials. In addition to the discussion of taxing cryptocurrency, Sitharaman announced that India would aim to roll out the CBDC before 2023. And while, of course, any big announcement of new regulatory regimes uh, is going to come with kind of mixed responses, there has been some initial tentatively positive reception from the uh, crypto and crypto startup community in India, seeing this as a legitimizing move. Shifting gears to security, container security firm Sysdig published a report on the container security landscape with some revealing conclusions. 
Among the headlines was the finding that 85% of container images running in production include at least one known vulnerability, and 75% of those are rated high or critical. In addition, the report found that fewer than half of container images going into production are ever scanned for vulnerabilities, and over 75% are running as root. So, some pretty big gaps in our security approaches happening across the, the landscape here, and that kind of raises the question, how can this be addressed? As we've seen in a multitude of contexts, not just in software or the cloud native space, solving a big distributed problem by trying to change attitudes is pretty challenging. That's likely part of the answer, but it can be slow going and take a while to sort of materialize with, with outcomes. And in the meantime, we still have that big problem to deal with. So one approach for organizations is likely going to be looking for more automated security processes, uh, looking for tighter CI/CD integration for security tools, trying to really shape the playground that developers are working in in order to make it more secure from the outset. And then hopefully as we kind of shift attitudes over time and get a little bit more buy-in from all of the stakeholders in the process, that can materialize into a more secure environment. Fingers crossed anyway. Well, it would feel wrong to dive into a wackadoodle corner without Nick Chase here to be part of it. Uh, so that is going to do us for today. Uh, next week, we'll both be back for our usual back and forth format, and we'll look forward to seeing you then. Have a great one. Bye.